Ooh. <laughs> Hold on real quick, because I was getting ready to like just jump in, but I need to pause and make sure we get this right. I want to take a moment and say welcome to YA. That wasn't enough excitement for you guys, because I'm super pumped for it. It's going to take some getting used to, um, but welcome to the first time to YA. For some of you guys, if this is maybe your first time hanging out, you guys are like, I have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, welcome, and let me share, you, share with you what I'm talking about. For the last 10 years, um, this community has gone and been identified um, with the name Pure. And it was home for even myself. I've been here for four years now, going on four years, and for so many others for so long. And um, there were some things, I'm going to speak to it in a little bit, but, you know, we just felt God was up to some things. And we rebranded. And if you guys saw, there was kind of like maybe very, very little insight to it. But on New Year's, we revamped and relaunched and rebranded. And now we are recognized as YA. Or like Vic said, there's so many different things going on. Wall ya. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, okay, um, YA, I think that's my favorite, that's, that's me right now, um, but yeah, Fo, like I said, for the first time, welcome to Young Adults, welcome to YA, and we're super glad that you are here, man, and um, also I have to say this, because I haven't seen some of you guys in I think two weeks, Happy New Year's, Happy New Year's, oh, you guys supposed to say back. Man, y'all don't sound no believable. I'm sad. Y'all not, it's not a happy new year? Who year already bad? No? Awesome. Okay, but y'all need a little, more, little bit more excited. Happy new year. Happy new year. I bought a popper and every... I didn't bring a popper, but happy new year. Um, like I said, guys, this is our first service of YA, and I'm glad that you're a part. And I'm going to jump in because there's some things I just want to share as we look forward into 2019 and the rest of our year. But before we do that... I'm going to pray for us, then we're going to dive in, then we're going to hang out a little bit. Sound good? Yeah. yeah. I love it. Everybody say yeah. yeah. All right, for sure. Uh, Jesus, thank you so much just for who you are. God, thank you um, for just all that you're up to, God. We thank you, God, for being a God that is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, but is always up to new things. I just think that's so amazing, God. So I just thank you um, for this space. I thank you for today. I thank you for this community and this family. We just pray as we look forward to 2019 that you'd move us, that you'd move me, that you'd move each and every one of us and our purpose and plans and wills, God, out the way, and that we would lean into what you have in store for us, that we'd be open to what you have in store for us individually and as a community. Um, so we, we open our hearts to that, and we just ask that you just move and speak today in Jesus' name. A. Man, yaha, yeah. So um, as we kind of dive in, and today, like I said, is this is our first YA service of the year, um, and really first YA service ever. Um, I, I usually like to try and start every year uh, taking a moment to pause and to communicate just dreams and visions um, and, and goals that we may have for this year, right, as, as we're looking for. And I think, like I said, it's even more important because we're um, not just the name change, but, but as we've been hanging out with our team, we started this maybe process back, I think, in August. We've, myself, Victoria, Matt been talking about it for really the last year, but we really started making moves and feeling like this is what God wanted to do for a variety of reasons, which I can share a little bit later. But we said, man, this is more than just a name change, but we feel that God wants to do maybe something new, maybe shift the culture, that, that this is a new generation, a new group of people, and, and, and what, what can they have to make their own? What can they have to make their own? So we like to stop, pause at the beginning of every year and speak in a vision, and even more so important for this year. And here's the thing, it, it, it's, it's not that we're going to get rid of like the things that were already done or the things that, that, that God has been doing, like some of the things that have been done really, really well. It's not like we're getting rid of them, but... But we do want to take a moment, man, and, and open up and say, God, what do you have as we move forward in the newness that you have for us, as we move forward in, in maybe some, some, some cool things, some fresh things that you have for us? I think as we were kind of walking through some of this, uh, one of the uh, passages that, is, that, that, that just really kind of settled on my heart was Isaiah. It was Isaiah 43, 19. And this one, it's going to be on the TV, man, and it says this. 
for I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? That I will make a pathway through the wilderness, and I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me and the jackals and the owls too for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. Go back to 19 for me. For I am about to do something new. I have already begun. Don't you see it? And see, man, uh, uh, so we know God is doing something new. But, but here's the thing, and I'm going to kind of speak to this as we jump into the passage we're going to uh, stay in today, which is going to be over in Acts. You don't have to turn there quite yet. Here's the thing. As, as this new idea was before us, God had given us maybe some visions and some, and some plans and some ideas and maybe some strategy and, and some things to change and some things to maneuver. But, but ultimately, we, 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 we really sat at this place and said, man, that this is a brand new community, that a lot. Some have been hanging out for a while, but some have maybe been hanging out for, for a month, maybe a couple months, or maybe just a year. And, and this is a brand new community that they're ready to call home. And as we were sitting trying to come up with these things, and uh, we came to this place and said, man, we really don't know what the entire picture looks like. We don't know maybe what, what the end goal looks like. There's some drives and some passion. So even before we dive into a lot of that, he, here's the thing. I want to set us up this way. That, that, that here's one thing that I know that this is what we want to live out of. This is what we want to do. Because as we create the dream or we create the goal or the picture as a community, I'm going to speak to that, is that it has to start somewhere. It has to start somewhere. And this is where our team just had, had, had kind of made our staple and said, look, we don't know what the end goal looks like, but this is where we're going to go from. This is what we're all going to buy into. This is what we're going to hold into. And this is what is going to be our mission as we press toward what God has for this community, the picture that God has for this community. And this is this. Now, we simply want to do this, man. We want to reach and disciple a generation of young adults to live out their faith in Jesus. That our mission is to reach and disciple a generation to live out their faith in Jesus. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is it. This is it. This is what we've decided and said, man, we don't, may not know what the end goal looks like or what the picture looks like. And, and, and maybe we have some ideas and, and I've been thinking of some things. And this can be really cool. But we said before we even get to the end, that this is where we need to live out of. That this is what needs to drive us. That for myself, that this is what should drive me, that for our team and our staff, for, for everybody on our team, this is what should drive us. And even to the point, as we're going to get into, for our community, is that this is what should drive us. That this isn't just my mission as a pastor or a leader here, but that each of us, that being a part of this community, is embracing this idea that we want our life, who we are, the community we represent, to do this. We want to reach and disciple a generation to live out their faith in Jesus. Here's the thing. I don't know if you guys know this, man. In our neighborhood, in our backyard, in the Inland Empire, there are over 200,000, 200,000 college kids and young adults. This is not even the, uh, in total, just within the colleges and universities, within the colleges and universities in the Inland Empire, over 200,000. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Some of them, maybe a few, good amount of them, know and love Jesus. The reality is, though, if, 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 we're, if we're honest and, and we look around, we know that there's probably a large chunk, a majority that has not experienced or encountered the love of Jesus. They've not encountered and experienced the hope of Jesus. And the thing is, us here, one part, major part of our vision, if there's one thing that has been drawn out, is this, is that we want, a part of why vision is this, is that we can be a space where our generation can experience Jesus and take steps towards living for him. 
that no matter where you are in the journey, that you can come into this space, into a, a group or a table conversation or, or a, just a meeting and a hang on a Thursday night, and no matter where you are, that at the very least you would encounter or experience Jesus. And no matter what that journey may look like for it, that you would begin to take steps of living a life. Take steps towards living a life for Jesus. The reality is, man, is if I can just be completely honest and I think about just my own personal life, when I think about my personal life, I know there are people that are dear, near and dear to me that need hope that are near and dear to me that need Jesus. I think about one of my best friends growing up, and when I say he's a legitimate drug addict, like I'm not talking about like, oh, I got that friend that, hey, he can't stop smoking weed. I'm talking about the friend that I had to literally go down to San Bernardino and pull him out of a dope house. I got family and friends that are near and dear to me who I know who I know live day in and day out in despair because they have not experienced the fullness and the hope that Jesus has for him, has for them. And the reality is, man, if you are honest with yourself and you take a moment, even as I was speaking, maybe some names came across your face, came across your mind, and you guys know some people and know some stories, know some situations And you know that there are people that are close to you that have not experienced the hope and the love and had an encounter with Jesus. But here's the thing, and we're going to dive in. If you got your Bibles, you can turn to Acts. But, but, But here's the thing. So here we are, we have this vision, and here we are, we have this reality that there are people that need to experience Jesus, and there's people maybe close to us that need to experience the hope of Jesus. But this is what I learned, and this passage is going to unpack this, is that even though we may want them to, you can't do it by yourself. I've had to come to the reality that I can't do it by myself. Yeah, there are some moments where maybe God uses some wisdom, maybe to speak some insight and you know, people come to him and draw, but, but, but I think there's something really unique in this passage that, that, that we're going to talk about that's going to set up a culture that we want to create here that's going to set up a drive for us as we move forward. Because here's the thing, like I said, you can't win the generation by yourself. I can't win the generation win the people close to me by myself, nor are we supposed to. Nor are we supposed to. So like I said, I'm going to read through this uh, passage over in Acts uh, 2.42, down to verse 47. We're going to read through it. I'm going to give some background briefly, and then I just want to unpack a few spaces in this passage that I think should set up, or that I believe will set up, our heart for 2019, and ultimately our heart for YA moving forward. Acts 2, verse 42 says this, And all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day and met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Last passage. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Here's the catch. And each day the Lord added to the fellowship those who were being saved. Those who were being saved. So let me just kind of catch you up on some background. This 
is the book of Acts, and it is written by a man named Luke. Luke was this physician, but he was also this man of, hey, I'm not just going to take people's, like, words for it. Like, I want to get, uh, what is it, witness accounts. I'm trying to find out everything that I can before I write and I start telling people about this thing. I need to know any and everything. So this man did his homework. So, so here's what's happening, man. He's, he's writing about the history of the church. He's also the writer of, of Luke. His name is Luke, right? He wrote the gospel of Luke, and now he's kind of following up, writing about the history of the church. He's writing about the history of the church, and in this moment, man, what has just happened? Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Pentecost. Ask me later. I don't have time to dive into it. But this moment called Pentecost, the Holy Spirit just fell. This, the, 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 the third part of God that Jesus promised had just come. Peter starts preaching. People start doing some really cool things. And, and this is the following moment that as he highlights and captures, he shares a little bit of Peter's sermons, and then he stops and has this moment before he continues on sharing about the history, and he highlights this five verses, these, these about six or seven sentences. And these six or seven sentences, he highlights that from what had taken place, he begins to speak about the first Christian community. He begins to speak about the first launch of a church, the first launch of a community of Jesus followers. And, and this is ultimately, man, I believe, I would hope, and I believe is what's going to capture or give us direction as we pursue the vision and the dreams that God has for our ministry, YA, not just in 2019, but moving forward. That in this passage, there's going to be some things, there's some things that, that, that are highlighted, I believe, begins to set up how we should think about our life, our community, and our relationship with Jesus. And, and, and I'm just going to unpack some of this, man. So I like, man, because the first thing that is highlighted is this. The first thing that, that he, uh, Luke begins to point out is this, man. He says that all the believers were devoted. That if we've said, man, we wrestle or, or we recognize that there is a generation of people that need Jesus and need to experience Jesus and need the hope of Jesus, this community figured something out, as we know uh, uh, from that last verse, and it says that every day that people kept being added, what is it that set this community apart? And I believe these are some things that highlight it. The first was, man, is that all the believers were devoted. And it says, man, that, that they were committed to learning, they were committed to growing, they were committed to prayer. And, and he, here's, what, here's the thing, is that, is, that, is that at that moment, many of them, this is brand new. This, we're not talking about uh, people that have been following Jesus for a long time, maybe Peter and a few other apostles. Some of this has just heard the good news, maybe heard a story, maybe seen a healing, but a lot of this is brand new to them. This is a new space, a new community. They've just hearing what's going on and saying, man, that's something I can grab hold to. That's something I can lean into. This is, this is like I said, they're not Bible college. They're not any of that. A lot of this is brand new, but this is what they did. Before they said, you know, maybe I need to get my life together. Before they decided, you know, hey, I need to deal with these issues. What they did say, it says, man, Paul's in all of me. I'm devoting myself to Jesus, that I'm devoting myself to Jesus, that, is that they had to decide to be all the way in. And it wasn't even all the way into Jesus. It wasn't even all the way into Jesus necessarily, because like I said, the reality is if we break them down individually, they probably had junk to deal with. They probably had baggage at home. They probably had relationship issues. What they did said is I choose to devote myself to the teaching and to the community in which I want to grow in, that this is where I'm placing my hope, and I'm choosing to go all in, that I'm choosing to go all in. And I love it, man, because one, one of my professors in uh, one of my professors in Bible college, man, I feel like I mention him all the time. His name is Dan Stewart. Anybody heard the name? Okay. Yeah. Um, his name is Dan Stewart, and he, uh, I went to Israel with him about four years ago, man, and we were talking about just some of the, 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 the radical things that, that people did, man, and he would always end it with this, man, is that, is that 
I'm not saying that we have to have our life all figured out. I'm not saying that we have to have all, all our issues figured out. I'm not saying that you got to be this perfect, put together Christian. What I am saying is this, is that this community said, I'm choosing to devote myself to this hope. And, 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 and Dan Stewart would say it like this, man, is this, that you got to buy what you sell. That if this is what you're going to be a part of, or this is what you want to place your hope in, or this is what you're, you're, you're going to choose to learn and to grow in, you have to give it your all. Because you have to choose to be devoted, that it can't be half in and half out. We'll figure it out, right? right? If there's some things that we got to do, we'll figure it out. But we have to make the decision that I choose to be devoted, I choose to place my hope in, and it says, man, that all the believers were devoted. And I believe that one word for us, man, as we look forward to the, to the new year and as we look forward to what God has for this brand new ministry or for YA, the next thing he says is this. And it says that all the believers met together in one place. And all the believers met together in one place place. Here's the thing. Not only do we need to be devoted to Jesus and teaching and prayer and learning and growing, but here's the thing. We have to be devoted and committed to one another. And we have to be devoted and committed to one another. Some of us just said, oh, gosh. Here's the thing. The reality is, man, I think each of us can attest, if it's you, go ahead, uh, that, that relationships and community is not always easy. Shoot your hand up if you believe that. Come on, anybody. All right. That, that community and relationship is not always easy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but, 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 but here's the thing. I love it, man, is, is because, like I said, this isn't some perfect box of Christians that came out of nowhere and said, yeah, I came. No, these are new followers of Jesus probably having the same issues that, that some of us have, the same family, same relationship issues that some of us had. And they had to make the decision that in my devotion to Jesus, in my devotion to learning, I have to be committed to one another. And it says, man, that they met together that and all the believers not the ones that I'm good with not the ones that that laugh at the same jokes not the ones that look like I look talk like I talk it says and all the believers met together in one place because they they, they were committed to learning growing committed to one another and they were committed that even in in some of the hardships and the strife and I tell you guys all the time man community is not easy, but I'm committing to participating in what God is up to. I'm choosing to commit to being in the same place, being in relationships, dealing with some of the junk because I know this is what God is up to. I know this is what God is in. I know this is, it's in him that I find my hope and this is where he's called and asked and I know that even when people die, you Crazy, right, Randy? Give me some up top. Yes. Okay. It says, man, you got to be committed. And all the believers met together in one place. But I choose to be committed to one another. The last one, man, he, he goes on and says this, man. He says, it says, and they worship together at the temple each day. And they worship together at the temple, and they worship together at the temple, at the church, each day. Here's, here's another thing that they knew. Not only did they know that they had to be committed to one another, they knew, they knew that faith and community and the importance of living a life for Jesus was more than a once a week thing. That it was more than just a one night a week thing or one morning uh, uh, thing, but it was an intentional lifestyle pursuing Jesus daily. That it was an intentional lifestyle pursuing Jesus daily. And, and I think that is, 
one major huge goal for me and our community. And I think we've done a really, really good job. But I think God even wants to take us even further or deeper, man, is that, is that YA is so much bigger than a Thursday night. That young adult, that the ministry, that the community that we develop, our life following Jesus, how we treat people when, uh, uh, on a daily basis, how we, how we choose to grow and learn and commit ourselves to pray. Like, that is so much more than a Thursday night. That's so much more than a Sunday morning. But it says, man, that they worship together at the temple each day. That they worship together at the temple each day. Here, here I'm, not, I'm not saying, look, we're not about to have YA every night of the week. No, we're not doing that. What I am saying is, is that when we begin to think about our relationship with Jesus, our growth, our commitment to one another, our commitment to community, our commitment to Jesus, that that should go beyond just YA is on Thursday. I know they got that food, or, or I know that cute girl, cute boy. Uh, uh, no, that, that it's so much bigger. That it's so much bigger than one day, but it is a lifestyle, an intentional lifestyle, choosing Jesus. It's choosing Jesus. Acts 47 said this, man. The last one, after unpacking all this, that, that, that they, they were devoted, they met together, they worshiped together each day. Remember how it wrapped up? It says, and all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. The crazy thing is, man, is this five, six sentences, this community would be the start of a movement that would eventually revolutionize the world. That it would revolutionize the world. That, I don't know if you guys noticed or what we were reading. This is the moment. This is it. We have Water of Life and, and all these other local churches. It started right here. That it started in this very moment. This is the first community church space that takes place. This, this is the beginning. This, this is the origins, man. And, and, and from this community, this community would be the start of a movement that would eventually revolutionize the entire world. That in a few hundred years, the gospel of Jesus will become the primary religion of the world's largest empire. That would move on to, to, for the world eventually, that would eventually set the stage for the gospel to go into every nation of the world. There was a lot of mistakes within that as well. But this is what this community, this group choosing to do life together, all because this community chose to do life with Jesus and chose to do life together. That they would begin to spark or create a community that would revolutionize the world. Like I said, guys, when I first started, I don't, I don't have the full picture. That, that I know that there are some new things that God wants to do, that, that I love the, you know, young adults and YA, and I'm excited about the branding, but I know it's so much more than just a name and branding and new colors and a new look, but God wants to do something fresh and something new. And here's the thing. I don't know if people are honest. Sometimes, you know, leaders are supposed to have like, oh, well, it's this three-step pan. I don't got all that. I'm going to let you know, one, honey, I don't know what the future looks like. I don't know what the end looks like. I have some ideas. I'm like, God, I'm praying for this. This would be cool. This would be dope. We can talk about that later. But, but I don't know. But this is what I do know. What I do know is that God can do something great in this generation if we choose to commit to him and commit to community. How do I know he can do something great? Because he did something great for people that chose 
to be devoted to learning, growing to Jesus and committed to community. Committed to community. Because remember, remember, remember what I said. This, this isn't even about you or I. This came back to the conversation that there is a generation, there is a group of people, there is family and friends and come on somebody, enemies that need the hope that Jesus gives. And I know we've heard, you know, maybe evangelism or, or posting, you know, that the devotion that you did on Instagram for people to see and to double tap. But I mean, this right here is like just a mind-blowing evangelism technique. They said, man, if you're going to reach people and bring people in and share the hope for people, then you guys need to be a community that says, man, this is something I have to be a part of. This is something I need to experience. This is something I must be a part of because... Wow, they know how to be human. <laughs> they get this whole life together, community thing. Not perfect, but they get it. And the way Luke sets it up in Acts, man, it was the greatest evangelism technique that, that they got the community right. They got togetherness right. So like I said, I don't know what it looks like, but this is what I do know. Whatever the dreams and the goals that God has for our community... This is what I know, is that we have to do it together. Whatever goals, focus, vision, dreams, and that some of that may be adjusted year in and year out, what I do know is I can't do this by myself. We have an amazing team and staff, but they can't do it by themselves. But as a community... If we're going to allow the great things that I believe God has for this community, if it's going to happen, we have to do it together. We have to do it together. Let me pray for us. Jesus. Thank you so much for your hope, your love, your grace, your peace. You are so good. God, thank you for giving us the opportunity to do life with you and do life with one another. God, we believe, we know that you are good, and there's sometimes, man, we're just not so good. But we just pray, God, that as we look forward to this year and all that 2019 holds, Lord, one, we pray that you would give us the heart, the hunger, and thirst to remain devoted to you, devoted to growing, devoted to learning. And God, that you'd give us the grace to be committed to community committed to being together. You said where two or three are gathered, there you are, totally present. Lord, that's our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's the thing, service isn't over and the reality is, guys, is this, is that together doesn't mean, together doesn't mean simply abandoning who you are, doesn't mean abandoning what you like and what you do to fit into, you know, okay, well, look, we got to be, you know, all one community. That's, 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 that's not what together means, but what together means is this, is that God created, shaped, molded each and every one of us for purpose, destiny. He gave us different personalities and characters, giftings, talents. He gave us all these different things. He, he, he gave us. And, and here's the thing, and this is where I want us to start. Brian, I'm sorry. I know your fingers, man. I apologize. 
that it doesn't mean, like I said, fitting in, but that God gave each and every one of us purpose, destiny, visions, dreams for our lives. And, and here is one thing that me and my team recognizes. We said this, is that before we can get a dream together and collective, it probably is going to be the result of the dream, purpose, passion that God has placed on each and every one of us. That God maybe is shared some things with you this year. Maybe you've been asking or dreaming, praying to God, like, show me this. God, grow me in this. Open this door for me. And what does this look like? And God has maybe given you dreams and visions and goals for this year. And this is what we want to do. It's said also in that passage that they shared everything, not just food and water, but it shared the uniqueness and who God created them to be. So as we talk about dreams for the year as a community, that involves the dreams of us individually. It involves the goals and visions for us individually. So this, we have this board up here that says, this year we will. Because to dream and achieve vision together also requires it individually. There's some dreams that God may have given you, and we just want to pray on those. We want to walk with those. We want to commit to those together. We're going to have it all year, and then we're going to come back, and man, and just watch some really cool things that God did. Watch some really cool things that God did. So, in a moment... We are We're going to go to the table. If you guys don't know, if it's your first time, we have this moment where it's still a part of service where we break out, we go into the table, we just have conversations, we dialogue. Before we dialogue, have conversations, though, we're going to do this. We're going to talk about, we're going to pray about, God, what is the dreams, visions, what is the passions, what are you driving me to this year? What are you driving me to this year? I'm going to start. Is it my dream and hope is that we just be one of the greatest community experience and environments that young adults can come and encounter Jesus. There's table leaders already in the back. You guys can actually just stand up. They're already there waiting. We're just going to walk through some dreams and visions together.